If you want to find where your food comes from, you'll probably need to take a long drive down a rural road. If you want to find the future of agriculture, you'll need to take this road in Cleburne, Texas, where instead of a farm, you'll find a one-of-a-kind greenhouse. The best fertilizer is the footsteps of the farmer. With a one-of-a-kind plant lover. We don't exist without plants. They were here before us. They provide everything we need. It's, it's a symbiotic relationship that we really can't afford to lose. My name is Aaron Fields, and I'm the director of horticulture at Eden Green Technology. The company is looking for new ways to feed a growing population in a future of climate change. Our interaction with the world today is pivotal. Pivotal to survival, survival for our species and all species. A deepening drought across the western U.S. Climate change and the disasters it fuels are threatening our farmlands. Farmers anxious about the future of their fields. In some cases, destroying them altogether. The arable land is finite and it is in danger. Finding a solution means taking a different perspective. You do that by making a greenhouse, a vertical greenhouse, that's uh, both economically efficient as well as environmentally sustainable. I'm Eddie Badrina and I'm the CEO of Eating Green Technology. We are standing in 40,000 square feet of the most advanced uh, technological vertical farming and greenhouse in the world. The system takes vertical farming, which is usually done in horizontal trays stacked on top of each other, and combines that with hydroponic farming, where crops grow in nutrient-rich water instead of traditional soil. Each plant can get its own stop along the water system in columns instead of rows to make better use of the space available. One and a half acres of our greenhouse, our vertical greenhouse, is equal to about 10 acres of traditional flat tray greenhouses, which is equal to 40 acres of traditional farming. When you think about that footprint of either 10 acres or 40 acres, you can't put that anywhere near to an urban population, near to the consumer, so it has to be way out in the country. When you put out way out in the country, it's gotta travel thousands of miles just to get to where we are today for the vast majority of consumers. If we can limit that and shrink that from 2,000 miles to 20 miles, and in some cases, two miles, uh, we're cutting out a lot of environmental factors uh, like diesel fuel needed for trains and for trucks and all the emissions that come from that. We're eliminating that uh, by putting it so much closer to the consumer. Shorter shipping routes could also lead to lower costs and produce that lasts longer on the store shelves and in your refrigerator, which means less waste since we're less likely to throw it out if it spoils too quickly. Oh, and because it's grown in a greenhouse, Field says it's healthier for you and the environment. If we manage our pests and diseases and our growth organically and proactively, we can prevent any use of any harmful chemicals. Making produce so clean, give it a taste, you can eat it right from the root. Bedrina says the Eating Green system has worked so well, more greenhouses are on the way. No one else can do what we do. Uh, and it's because of that, because of the patent, because of the hard work of our team, uh, that we are now building a new commercial facility which is twice as large as the one behind me and we will be establishing a mesh network of greenhouses all across the United States. But the applications of this tech could reach far beyond this planet and this generation. It's very much doable on other uh, surfaces in other planets because it's a closed system. We're using the same sun that's on Mars, we're using it here and uh, the water and the carbon dioxide that's used, it's being worked on being generated uh, for a closed loop system for a colony on Mars. And while all of this is a glimpse into a possible future, looking for my roots, Fields stays grounded among his plants. And a balance between air roots and water roots. And focused on this planet. And we don't have a lot of time to help it. And when that goes, habitats go. When habitats go, everybody loses. That's global. And the ability to take this agriculture, make it less intensive, this food production, this product creation, this sustenance, and do it in a very sustainable and soft impact way to where we work with the environment and not against it, is going to make all the difference for future generations.